would have subjected them to serious criminal sanctions as recently as World War II. Well, that ironically is the very time when this school was operating to subvert our system within the United States, and needless to say, other systems. So today we have a clearly divided society, both in terms of, uh, you might say, respect for authority, and also a love for and willingness to defend our country. We're very fortunate today we're not drafting those youths who have already been subverted into our armed forces. Thanks. Mr. Bob. Well, one of the major developments that resulted from the Frankfurt School was the insidious but very effective political correctness movement. And it's effective because it shuts down debate on the issues that they disagree with. You just label it politically incorrect. Uh, they label people racist, fanatics, right-wing extremists. You don't have to get to the issues like moral degeneracy, which they promote. Well, you shut people down. You're bigots and you're too straight-laced. Uh, absurd concepts like diversity is our strength and multiculturalism is promoted. Anybody that takes exception to that or to immigration policies, whatever the, the left's agenda is, that becomes the politically correct. And those that disagree, which the vast majority of the American people do on most of these issues, they shut down debate on it within the media and the institutions, particularly in education, by simply labeling it as politically incorrect. How dare you have these thoughts after we've already told you that this is what we're supposed to believe in and this is how we're supposed to think, that uh, the people themselves really don't get an opportunity, and that's why some of these young people have been brainwashed, because they're never given the opportunity to hear the opposition point of views. And so this is one of the, probably the most insidious and most effective weapons that the left has developed, is this whole concept of what's politically correct and what is politically incorrect. Mr. Taney, do you believe that the Frankfurt School has had an impact on the uh, United States of America today, or is having an impact on the United States of America today? Yes, it is. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's having a major impact, particularly on the economy. Uh, the, uh, the Freudian, Marxist-inspired uh, revolution that's going on in this country uh, has made deep inroads into our society. Um, it, uh, part of their strategy is to use the government as a tool to achieve their ends, and that has uh, led to uh, what we refer to today as big government. Um, they, they managed to get in and got control of the government, and government has been ever-expanding ever since. Um, and, and another po part where they've got into our society is through the courts. Um, this, uh, the movement that they're promoting has spawned um, myriad uh, lawsuits uh, lawsuits such as uh, racial discrimination, sexual discrimination, um, gender gap pay issues, and uh, gay issues, um, and generally, uh, you know, affirmative action related lawsuits. Um, our, our corporations today and, and other companies are plagued with expenses in handling these lawsuits. And pretty much, uh, where they're really, I guess in a nutshell, what they're doing is their movement is overburdening our economy with costs through taxation, regulation, and lawsuits. Now, the impact that that has had on our economy is it causes the cost of living and the cost of doing business to be higher than they would be otherwise. The high cost of living is causing many families to have to struggle in this country, uh, there are many families that are struggling to make ends meet. It's a direct consequence of this revolution. Uh, also, uh, our com U.S. based companies are, are not are having difficulty competing in the global economy. Uh, and as a result of that, we are losing job after job to uh, lower cost foreign countries. That too is directly related to the um, to this movement and the, 
the cost burden that it's imposing on the economy. Well, Roger, I think that's a very good insight on how the Frankfurt School uh, has affected us today. Dr. Nelson, is there any other <coughs> uh, points that you think need to be made on this subject? Uh, the important thing is this, a school of thought uh, can be very important. You may think, well, these are just theoreticians. What can theoreticians do? They're just talking in a lecture room. But they are also educators, and education has a great multiplying effect. They reach the thousands in the strategic positions, in the mass media, and the educational establishment, and all the other areas of American life. Uh, allow a generation or two to go by, and that's what's been done since uh, the Frankfurt School uh, published their all-important work, Authoritarian Personality, in 1948. And you can see the great results, the birth of the new left. Allow another generation to go by after uh, Herbert Marcuse published his uh, One Dimensional Man around 1960. And we see the new left that he helped bring into being now beginning a long march into our institutions uh, where significant people have gotten positions of command at the heights of our culture and they are beginning now to be the manipulators and the controllers of the thought of the mass mind. In other words, right now we are seeing the theoreticians of the Frankfurt School as a real material force out there and they are close to grasping what they want destruction of our culture. Dr. Nelson, thank you. Gentlemen, I appreciate your comments and the insight that you have given us on a very important subject. Thank you.